We are so blessed. Yes, we are. Again, um, Prophet Smith, I thank you and thank everybody because we all come in with an attitude to serve the Lord. But I thank you in the, in the um, invocation and inviting the Lord in. It makes a big difference when the focus is on Him. Amen. That's what we're just, just talking about. The problem in the Ephesian church. They lost the first love. We just finished discussing that. So, so see what happens when Christ is the center. And then all these things begin to come out, not of us, but of, of who he is. It comes from God. Everything out, the, out of the belly, the living water comes. You know, you don't have to think about it. You had a procedure. Instead of being scared and nervous, the Lord begins to speak to you. Focus on him, the chief one. Praise God. I'm just saying an example. This is a... A, a very holy place and I'm so glad we're getting the lesson mm -hmm. here that Christ is if we just listen just follow the, the leading of the Lord Jesus Christ you see that mm -hmm. we have a wonderful example God our Heavenly Father has let us know that we're one with him Jesus let us know that I and my father are one see that I and my Father are one. If we'll just not let anything separate us from the Father, the Christ will continue to work through us. Just like Jesus said, greater works because I'm going to follow. The Christ, the Christ now, the anointed one, will continue to work through us. Yep. You see that? So I give God all the praise for it. Lord, we thank you in all things that you are our God and we are your people. We thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your people. Thank you for the willingness to follow on to know you, dear Lord. We give you all the praise. Let us go to the Revelation chapter 2. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Chapter 2. We're glad to see you back, family. Um, we missed you. You look so refreshed. I thank the Lord for taking you safely, bringing you back. And thank the Lord. The Revelation chapter 2. We're in a message right now to Ephesus. Eventually, we'll go through the seven churches. Some people say, well, we, we heard that before. Don't you ever do that in here, where, it's where the Spirit is. Because he's alive and he'll Amen. show you great and mighty things. You know, that we think we might know, but he'll show you something to own to it. Glory to the name. It's always a new and living way. This way of righteousness never, ever gets old. Never, never. We might move, but it doesn't. Glory to God. So, the Revelation chapter 2. Verse 1, unto the angel, messenger of the church of Ephesus, write, These things said he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand. Seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. Who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, the churches. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them that are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars. And has borne and has patience, and for my name's sake has labored, and has not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat is added by the translator. I have against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember therefore from whence thou <clears throat> art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise or presence of God. Isn't that something? Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, let's back up just for a little bit of review. 
I know thy works, thy labor, thy patience. And what we did, God says, the Lord says, he knows thy works. He knows. He's satisfied with that. What he's seen is himself in them. If he's satisfied with it, he's seen himself in them. Yeah. See that? We went to the New Testament and we looked at Jesus, how the works come. The works come when one reaches maturity. You didn't see Jesus stepping out before Father. He's, he's growing, right, in spirit. He's growing up in stature, in wisdom of God. <clears throat> one day about 30 years old, they need some wine at a wedding. Jesus' mother brings the situation to him. So, he reminds her, you know, in other words, to just paraphrase, don't, not before the time, my, I my hour. See that? My hour. In other words, the timing, my timing doesn't come from you soul, woman being a picture of the soul, not being disrespectful to a parent. He would, now he's saying something for our learning. Mm -hmm. But to soul, I cannot honor you I have to do it the hour of my father. Because he honored father in dealing with the soul, father blesses. He tells them what? Go fill up six water pots and draw them out to the governor of the feast. Uh, listen, while they're in the step doing what he said, the water changes to wine. He's at a place called Cana, which means possession. Remember that? It may, if, if you look it up in Strong's, it takes something like reads, but you trace the to, back till you get to the root meaning. It means possession. Then you start seeing things in it like uh, parts of the anointing oil. It's his. Everything belongs to the Christ. You see that? Nothing is being done in and of man. It's the power of God on his anointed one. See that? Then you have another situation. Jesus comes back into. He goes out, Judea, and he comes back into, um, comes into, back to Cana. A message is sent to him from a nobleman. Listen now, a royal official. He's got a, a, a son that's ill. See that? Near unto death. Again, Jesus doesn't move from the position of possession. Y'all hear this? He commands something. He's still at Cana, but he commands something to happen in Capernaum. I'm so glad to hear you, Bishop Paul. I'm telling you, we're getting a lesson around here. You can stand right here in Sierra Vista and change something in Timbuktu, and we better understand that by the power of the Holy Ghost. He stayed right where he was and told him. Sure enough, at the same time, Jesus spoke it. The young man was Saved the line. See that? He stayed in where? Canaan. This is where, look, my possession is. We forget we're in Christ sometimes. And you know how people are forgetting that we're in Christ because somebody keeps telling you he's coming instead of that we're in him. That's what's happening. That's what's happening right there. See that? Glory to the name of the Lord. God is spirit. You don't put spirit in abeyance. Are you, are you out of your mind? Spirit is everywhere. Omnipresent. How you going to hold spirit off somewhere till you get ready for it to come? Or till you think it's coming? Just think about what you're saying sometimes. And then we see, <coughs> we see him not only deal with the soul, we see him deal with the what, power of the flesh. Because like I said, this man was a royal official. He could have commanded some things, but didn't move Jesus. You see that? Didn't move the Christ. Didn't move God. See that? And then we see him again where the name Cana comes up again. I thank God the way he'll teach sometimes. It's almost like he'll take me back to a little girl and just put elementary things together and then he'll show you how it come together. I just appreciate him so much for that. Here's something else. You get the disciples. You got, you got seven of them there, but it names some in particular. And one is Nathaniel of Cana. Of all places. It's mentioned that it doesn't mean, like I brought to your attention, you see Nathaniel's name, but you don't hear Cana mentioned until right here, this miracle Jesus is going to, to perform in his resurrection. So, 
we're going back reviewing these things. They toil all night, don't catch any fish. And here's this voice from someone on the shore. They don't even recognize it. But it's Jesus. It's the Christ. It's him. John realizes when he starts talking, it's the Lord. All you got to do is know the voice. If you know who you are, you'll know the voice. And when he starts talking, no matter what form he shows up in, you'll know that it's him. You see? Glory to the name of the Lord. So we see then the works. The works. Disregard the soul. Oh, listen, our soul is renewed. Our mind, again, we have the mind of Christ. Our will is to do the will of the Father. The prophet is that prophecy have reminded us of that so beautifully this morning. This is what we keep doing. You don't just say something one time and trace on all. I can't wait till I get another new exciting lesson. No, we need to live this. Amen. We're here to do the will of our Father. Blessed be his holy name. Thank you, Lord. The flesh, the arm of flesh, we, we're not dependent on that. We, we, do, we run that, you see, by the power of God. We're dependent on the arm of flesh to do things. Just think about what has happened in our midst this morning. We've seen sons of God get up here and minister by the power of the Spirit. Amen. Ain't nobody said a thing about the problems going on out there in this world. And it's getting worse and help us, Lord. Because, listen, you know what Cana means now, don't you? You know in whom you live, move, and have your being is in the Christ of God. That does not change, blessed be the name of the Lord. You know by Psalm 91, a thousand can fall at thy side, ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. We have to walk in these things. Have the faith, glory to the name of God. You see that? Realize that this is a, a life, our very lives are works in righteousness. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So then we see not only does, when, when the works are done, they, they're done, listen, external to the soul, external to the arm of flesh, but done in the power of his resurrection. You fished all night, you didn't catch anything? Y'all experienced fishermen, you're not going to find any more fishermen ex more experienced than you are, and you didn't catch anything. Well, do this, put your net on the right side. Amen. Then they bring in this hole. We looked at all that, not going to reteach all that, but we looked at what they brought in. See that, blessed be the name of the Lord. And then, despite you catching all that, when you get to show us something already cooking, yeah. where it come from? See, God, he doesn't need us, we need him. Amen. We need him. Yes, blessed be the name of the Lord. So you see, in resurrection power, who's calling the shots on things? See how in, when dealing with the flesh, Dealing with the soul, dealing with the arm of flesh, we trust God and just obey God. See that? When you get into resurrection life, all we have to do is listen to Christ. Just listen to it. That's right, Bishop Bob. He hadn't said nothing, just did exactly like you planned it to do. Till he speaks. Till he speaks. That's all we have to do until he speaks. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So, he got a problem though. The, tell this messenger to Ephesus that's a problem. You left your first love. You hate things. You hate those that say that they're apostles and you know they're not. Apostle is this, a sent one. You know the difference in somebody sent and somebody just went on their own. What must we do to do the works of God? Jesus answered and said, believe on him whom he hath sent. He sent his son. Everybody that, listen, a true apostle is going to be sent and then God's signature will be on them and you will have no doubt whatsoever that this is God. See that? No matter how talented they are, no matter how eloquent they are, you, it, it doesn't mean one thing apart from the anointing. See that? You, that's one thing you can't buy, you can't manipulate, you can pretend you got it, but either you got it or you don't. And I thank God so much for that because that's where we can know the difference. If we are filled with the Holy Spirit, you will recognize the anointing when it, when it is not. Glory to God. So then, he tells them, you left your first love. We looked at that last time we came together in midweek study. You left your first love, first being this, the pre- Eminence. Nothing is in the place of the Lord. You get so busy dealing with things 
and you'll forget about who's the center. You see that? I'm telling you from experience. You'll get so used to re reacting to people, you'll forget that you're really supposed to be focusing on the Lord. I don't, want to, I don't like to talk about it. I'm just saying things for your learning. I thought I could shut myself off. I told you all how people used to lie on me so much. I just quit interacting. If I went out in town to speak, I might or might not. I wonder about saying I said nothing I didn't say. You see what I'm saying? That was crazy. You hear God? Because any person that you came in contact with, that's really you. Now I see that. We're one. There's no separating us. We're one. Whether you talk about me or not, we're still one. In God. You hear that? Blessed be the name of the Lord. So I thank God I'm able to see, see things. And I thank God, like Bishop Paul is saying, the growth. He was using natural things to show us how far we've come. But if you look at it, there's nothing in the earth that from the beginning. Why didn't Caesar have a space shuttle? Somebody get God. Ain't nothing, no resource here. Now that what they did, then you just been growing and growing and growing and growing. And you hear this? That's the grace of God. That's his intelligence, his power coming through the man. The man ain't come up with nothing. If somebody tell you they invented something, they did not. They tapped into the infinite power of the most high God. And that's how stuff got here. And it gets better and better. You'll see that in your own life. You'll start to do things differently. Now how is this going to work and how is that going to work? And just leave it up to him and watch it just work and the flow out of you. See that? Glory to God. So, we looked at that, we developed that. You left your first love. The first thing people want to preach and tell you, you need to go back to that place where you first believed. You don't need to go back to anything. You need to back center on the Christ. You're going to make a mistake. We developed that from the Old Covenant, looking at Elisha and what God did when Samaria was under siege. They were so hungry, a famine was so desperate, Nothing, nothing for the people. People begin to eat their babies. We saw that. We saw that from the scripture. Remember that? Yes. Glory to the name of God. The uh, ass's head selling for eight piece, eighty rather pieces of silver. Dove's dung was selling for five pieces of silver. And we showed you that from the scripture. The type. Listen, ass's head, donkey's head. If you want to be proper, it says as and it said in the scripture. And that's because we need to hear that because Ishmael was the son of the flesh. He, his actual name means wild ass. There's no tame in that. In, no, in none of us except the power of God. You see that by about being born again. But see, you have man's wisdom separate from God. That's ass his head. And people are spending, we looked at 80. We went to the scripture and we saw in the psalm where it's the psalm of, of Moses where he said three score and ten and perhaps 80 years of life. You see that? So we, a person was spending what looks to, looks like their very life on man's wisdom. Well, just tell me you don't see that today. People are buying man's books and man's uh, CDs and everything. You see that? We we'll, we'll buy this kind of stuff and, and forget about reading scripture and asking the Holy Ghost to put light on it. You see that, what I'm saying? Man's wisdom and your life is being spent in that. By the time you wake up and realize, well, this, this might be the truth and it might not up in here. <laughs> You're wasting about five or ten years. That's your life. See that? Your natural life. I'm not talking about the, the life in the spirit. And for when, when we said the dove's dung is simply this. And we're not saying anything negative about a move of God. But this is what I'm trying to get people to see. It's the spirit's nature to bear us upward. On into that. Into fullness. Just like you heard prophets remind us this morning. To bear us into fullness. How are you going to go back to something? If you're supposed to be born in the spirit, born higher and higher. And people were paying just to keep from starving. And you see it going on in churches out there all the time. To keep from starving, people are paying five. Grace, giving great graces there for your life to move on. But people are giving it away. 
silver. Silver speaks to redemption. Then you find out here comes God's man, true prophet. Tomorrow, this time, you're going you're gonna to be able to buy barley, wheat, buy the bushes for shekel, just a shekel. Listen, the, it only cost you what God said in the beginning, the shekel after the shekel of the sanctuary. You should you paying any more than that? And that's not really paying anything. That's a matter of believing what Jesus has done for us. See that? So we thank God for these things that we have seen in this church and how we can apply them. We can just go back and look at scripture and lay things over. Glory to the name of the Lord. We've got to be careful that we don't... Don't go back. Put him always at the center. See that? And you won't get off task. You won't start preaching about current events and things people are doing that are, are displeasing to maybe the order of some house that you have established, whether it's God's order or not. You know, when you're trying to control people, and that's very difficult to do. So the thing you do is preach Christ and him crucified. Then you ain't got you won't talk about whipping somebody in line. The Holy Ghost will take care of it. Amen. I keep telling you that. I keep the Holy Spirit will take care of everything. All we have to do is say what it is God says to say. Amen. Then all the other people who don't need to hear, who really looking for life, can go ahead and grow. See that? Now, Bishop Paul, you said something this morning in your delivery, and it goes along with this. You see it here where he says, remember, he says, nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, verse 4, in the Revelation 2, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen. You hear this? You were at a high place. This is what I keep saying. The Spirit is bearing you up. Fall means you, we're doing something apart from God. See that? So remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, listen, and repent. Repent. Go back to that high place in me where you belong. See that? And do the first works. First works, look. First works, believing on him. The first work of the first, last, middle, and all of them. See that? He says, or else I will come to thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. We need to hear this right here. If you don't do what he says, he's just going to snatch life from you. He didn't say that. You hear this? He didn't say that, mother. He did not say he's going to snatch anything. He said, remove your candlestick out of his place. This word move here is where our language is, of course, a Greek word, but where our word Kinesis comes from. You smart folks know what that is. Something that gets moved by stimulus. Usually, listen, light. How did we start out? I heard a voice behind me turn around and looked at it. And when I described it to everybody, John, it's all light. You need to be moved from this place you put yourself in. And be, I'm going to stimulate. If you don't repent, go back to where you're supposed to be in me. I'm going to stimulate you out of it. You hear this? With light. That's what he's doing to us. Some of us are in some places that are not consistent with where we belong as sons of God. And he is stimulating us. You hear that? With a candlestick. A candlestick, listen. If, if you went back to the tabernacle, man didn't light those things in there. That light came from God. Listen, one God sent a light. God sent light out of the most holy place. Listen, family. A light beam of God went out and lit up the brazen altar sacrifice. That fire was supposed to never go out. <clears throat> Priests have let the fire of God go out. I don't know what you're doing and don't want to know. I'm telling you, when I say don't want to, because it's of no benefit to anyone in the spirit. You need to go back to that place in God and let the Christ do the work through us. He's, he, is, he is not saying, I'm going to get rid of you. You hear the difference in that? Like Bishop Paul said, like how God is love. He's not going to just throw anybody away. Righteousness doesn't work like that. That's where we put a mindset in 
when you feel that you're separated from God, you're going to come up with all kinds of doctrine, and that's what man has done. You go back and look at this stuff, and I'll read the Bible sometimes and be like, this sacred text is not saying what this person said, and people thought it was one of the greatest preachers of all time. Sacred text is not saying that. And that's where we better get and let the Spirit of God live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God instead of out of the doctrine of men. Well, we got to base it on something. You need to base everything on what the Holy Ghost tells you. See that? Glory to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Go back to that high, high place in Him. So, you let, when, listen, you got to leave that lowly state. Leave that lowly state. I'm going to stimulate you. I'm going to move you. Isn't that powerful? Yeah. Now I'm just going to snatch you out, snatch you out, and throw you over there somewhere and put somebody else in your place. You ever see people in, in ministry get mad at folks like that? They just throw you out, put, put somebody else in your place, and then after a while when they don't do what you want, you want to throw, put somebody else in there. See, that's not what this is talking about. Like Bishop Paul said, this is a love right here you will never calculate it. In a finite mind, you need the mind of God himself, the mind of Christ, to even begin to understand what this word is saying. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Because our minds, we got too much, too much, too many things we've come up with in our society. And, and if you left this society, there's not another one in the world that would be any better. But that, you go, that you're coming up with things that automatically separate you from God. This person is good. That person is, is not. Who told you that? That person is one with you. What you mean they're not good? Are you good? You consider yourself good? Are you in God? None's good but God. All are, all are God's children. So what do you mean this person is, is, is good and that one's not? Who told you that? You see? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The scriptures tell us it's in him we live, move, and have our very being. Now, why would God throw you out? If it's in him, you live, move, and have your being. So somebody misunderstood some things they've been teaching out of this, this book, then haven't they? Amen. Yes, they have. Yes, they have. So, if there's another thing. Verse 6, we're getting there. But thou hast, this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Now, this a, is a, a sect of people that instead of embracing what the Apostle Paul had, the foundation he had laid in Christ about the grace of God, instead of receiving that, receiving him and all his righteousness, people took grace as an occasion for stumbling. And and like it's all right. I mean, just licentiousness. Oh, I can do it. You know, I've had, you're, you'd be surprised how many times early years of ministry. Well, there ain't no condemnation. You know, you know, I'm just, you know what I'm saying? You, but, but you got to finish it. There's now no condemnation mm -hmm. for those who are in Christ Jesus. Who won't listen. Not after the flesh like you're doing. Disobedient, pitiful child. Not like you're doing, but what? After the Spirit. There's no condemnation. I can do what I want to do. Yeah, that's true. Um, I'm like David. I don't see any enemies. I told you, you just keep preaching Christ. You hear that? Did we have to go toe to toe? Uh uh. No. Couldn't stand it. You ever seen it? Never mind. Never mind. Thank you, Lord. This false freedom. See what I'm saying? If you're not, if your heart is not toward righteousness, you miss something. You hear that? Because Christ has been made unto us righteousness. How do you expect to live out of the liberty of the grace and truth that he's brought and disregard him who has been made unto us righteousness? But you have a whole sect teaching people, oh, you can just do what you want to do. Grace will take care of. The Ephesians hated that. Now I'm going to tell you something else and bring you a little bit forward. Because 
other denominations started to pick up stuff out of, <coughs> out of others. How many of you have been in ministries and they will say, well, you are, you are laity. You can, you listen here. You can work up here. Well, up here for them is to let you know it's higher than there. Yeah, man. Right. You can work up here, but you are, you're a late, you're a late minister. Layman. Yeah. You see that? Yeah. That means, you know what that literally means? You are not a priest. Mm -hmm. We got a problem. Right. <laughs> we got a big problem. I'm getting ready to read it to you from the Revelation chapter 1, verses 4 through 6. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is, which was, and which is to come. And from the seven spirits which are before the, his throne. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his blood and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. So how can you be led to in a king and a priest too? We have to read the word. We have to read this word and really see who we are. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Because somebody's in error and it sure is not God. Amen. See that? Mm -hmm. See that? The church's order of doing things that regard that late type ministry, listen, that is not the Melchizedek order. That will never teach anybody things out of an endless life. Never teach you one thing about an endless life. See that? Look at look, go all the way back in scripture and look at Abram. He met the priest of the most high God. Melchizedek, the priest of the most high God. He served in bread and wine. Mm -hmm. That's, that makes all the difference. I really thank all of you that have walked with me in this labor of love, just trying to do, I know for, especially for the brethren and the type of society and the prejudices and things, I'm not gonna be over there with this woman. Well, you know what, I watched God. I used to always dream, always dream. Things that would show me things about the ministry. And I'll always be me and three others in the dream. Those powerful dreams that I've been telling you over the years. And I watch God at any given time. In this ministry, there's always been three brethren. I'm not talking about men that they like listen, like they said they they their wives boss them around, that kind of stuff. I'm talking about men. I'm talking about strong brethren. Sons of God have always, God has put them in, <coughs> in line with this ministry, you know? Strong brethren. I give him praise for that. I mean, just a minimum of three. See that? It's like you're, you're not about the horsemen. See that? The horsemen. The, the horseman just kept showing up in, in supernatural ways. I'm talking about people People on the other side of the world would love to meet and, and God just said it where we just happen to be in the same presence with them. We keep telling you about our brother, Brother Ray. God sent Brother Ray to this house like Bishop Paul told you earlier. And I never will forget him. And he used to just call from time to time to, and speak with us. When he called, and no matter what I was doing, I answered that phone and said, Sister Carolyn, you're on my mind this morning. You got heavy shoes on. I go get a pencil and a piece of paper and sit down and listen to him. And just watch the power of God and the witness and, and, and it just watch God just come through him. See that? I thank God. I just, I truly, I thank God. Blessed be his holy name. I want to go to Romans 6 because we need to see the problem of people trying to do things on their own apart from the righteousness of God. When we do this, family, we'll be done. You enjoy the rest of your day. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 6. Leaving John on Patmos now and going back to see something that, was, that is learned here. You're a king and a priest. Okay? 
unto God and Father. Unto God and His Father. Thank you, Lord. Don't come out from under that. Just like the, just like the, the prophet has shared this morning. This, you, listen, this is not something that you rehearse. This in you. You see that? Not just rehearsing this just to say, I, I know this A, B, and C. This is in you. That's the difference when it's in you. It's coming up out of you. You see, that's the difference when it's in you. It's not coming from up here. It's coming up out your belly. You see that? Hallelujah. So then, Romans 6. Let's get some things straight here. These people that want to hold on to this false freedom. See that? Don't have any moral restraint and that type of thing, and teaching people that it's all right. And see, there's a lot of stuff like this crept into the church. Why? Because if you tell people what they want to hear, they'll stay. And see, usually the adversary kind of <laughs> serve people that, that, that will be very quite resourceful. You see what I'm saying? For you? So, oh, well, I can't make them mad because I need it for this. Then. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something from experience. All you ministers is getting ready to do what God have you do in life. Listen. You will never need one thing that God's grace won't make sure that you have. You do not have to concede anything to any, any body or anything of the flesh. God will make sure that you have it. And you will have it before you even realize that you have it. Can y'all hear that one? You will have it before you even realize it, okay? Romans 6 verse 1, what should we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Somebody missed Paul's lesson. If you got a whole sect out there and you out there teaching people it's all right to stay in sin. You don't know you died. You don't know that his death was your death and his, that's why his life is your life. And that's why people are frustrated today. They don't realize that, that we were crucified with Christ and we died with him and were buried with him. They don't, they don't realize that old nature has been taken out, so they keep making provision for the flesh. And then call on God to help. Well, well God, I call on the Lord. And then, then you don't get any answer because you know where you are and where you want to stay. See this? Grace, grace, no, grace meets the works. Y'all hear God, please, if you haven't heard anything this morning. Glory to God. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Family, I just started out reading the Bible to people right here, and they said I was speaking death over them. And then I got bold one meeting. I said, yeah. Yes, I am. Because that old man has got to die. And you need to know that. I'm not talking about your physical death. I'm talking about that old nature has got to die before you ever realize anything in this newness of life. Blessed be the name of God. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism. See that? Baptism into death. That didn't kill you, did it? No. And like that as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. This is a constant walk going up where elder. See that right there? Go back to what? See? For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of of his resurrection. That's what I was trying to show you about these works. When when Bishop Paul says he feels it, he knows that it's coming, that's because you're learning to hear his voice. It's going to come out the resurrection. It's not going to be something that I see this and I feel sorry for it. Listen, if the resurrection wants to do something about it, it can't help but straighten up. Somebody please hear God. We worry about things that we don't even have any business worried about. See that? Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. See, how are you going to confess that Jesus has come into flesh and, and be serving sin? But this is what this, these people, Jesus said, they, I, you hate them and I do too. And then they got the nerve to set up a ministry and keep you below where God has placed you as a king and priest. See that? God's given us a mouth and wisdom. You're going to tell somebody some things. 
You're going to tell somebody some things and they're going to be liberated, family. Y'all hear this? They're going to be really, really set free. Hallelujah. For he that is dead is free from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with Christ. Knowing that the Christ, nor rather that Christ being raised from the dead, dies no more, death have no more dominion over him. So what's this life of death coming out of folks for? They don't know who they are. See? For in that he died, he died unto sin, listen, once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. This is what's supposed to be proceeding from us. The life of God. The very life of the Father is supposed to be coming from us. You see that? Likewise, reckon ye yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive unto God. How? Through Jesus Christ our Lord. <laughs> Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. See that? That's what they're doing. Those Nicolaitans, that's what they're doing. See, now listen, if you never know, think about it. You never ever learn. That you are a king and priest unto God. And that your position is to serve, just to serve the, some carnal man, which we're trying to keep from recognizing. Even We're not trying to not even give that stuff a place. It's just a teaching point. You understand what I'm saying? And you spending your time in that. How, how are you ever, ever going to grow out of that? You just stay in there. You know what? You teach your children to do it. Yep. And they'll be doing the same thing. And I told Bishop Paul, I said, Bishop Paul, I said, this new crop of, of young bishops coming up. And I said, they're doing the same thing the other one's doing. And I'm just going to send love to them, you know. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of righteousness unto sin. See that? But yield yours. Let me go back up to, to, to 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. That ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments. <clears throat> listen. Of unrighteousness unto sin. Somebody didn't get the lesson. If, if you. You see. Well, if you got this false freedom. Uh, uh, apart from grace. You didn't get the lesson. I told you all. And they were, everybody was ministering about grace. And I saw the selfish tone it took. It's like they don't have the lesson. They don't understand it. They don't understand it. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are, listen, alive from the dead. You want to see greater works? Wake up. Thank you, Bishop, for hearing God and calling us out of sleep because this is what it's going to take. We got the resurrection. You're not going to experience anything out of resurrection until you see this death. Did he get up before he died? Somebody here, God, this too simple. Right here, did he get up before he died? No. Then there's a death that's got to take place. His death was our death, and we need to see that. Your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have <clears throat> dominion over you. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. You see this? What does it talk about falling from grace? Remember uh, Paul wrote to the church at, at Galatia? When you start putting your trust in the law, that's when you have fallen from grace. You see what's happening over here? These Nicolaitans, that's not helping anybody. That's not helping anybody. But even though you hate them, you can't do anything about it if you don't let Christ be the sinner. Right. That's, that's like you said, well, I, I, just, I just hate that. I just hate that. I just, well, what you going to do about it? You're going to let God be true and man be the liar that he is. See that? I promise you, anything unlike the power of God is not going to stay where the power of God is. Amen. <laughs> Verse 15, we're getting there, family. What then? Shall we sin because we're not under the law but under grace? God forbid. This is the second time we heard that, didn't we? Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness? 
You Ephesians would know this because Paul has taught you. Right. And there's a record here that you all would know that. See that? And like, that's what I'm saying, restoration. There's some things we know. Don't let anything slither in and come up over and take our attention from being in the Christ. Right. And giving him, giving him preeminence in all things. Nothing, nothing should take his place. But God be thanked, verse 17, that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became servants of righteousness. See that? See that? You'll go from, you'll see things and people will just be doing things that are so hurtful to other people and and you'll just go from that kind of wagging head to, I mean, listen, heartfelt prayer. They only knew who they were. You become one mind with Christ. You see that? He's everywhere. Places that you know are just, just destitute. It seems like God, the thing about God, he's omnipresent. So when we, like Bishop Paul was saying earlier, are conscious of that and totally in tune with that, that's how you're making changes. People are trying to, what? We, are you going to fly on a plane and go change something? I can see you right now trying to get up into some embassy of some country and I'm here to make change. You can't do it like that and you know that, don't you? I mean, the country to country sometimes have a problem with that, so you know that's not the way. But the thing about it, we've got to realize who God is. He's spirit. Amen. And if we stay in spirit, you can begin to affect some things. Like Jesus stood in Cana and affected death over in Capernaum. Somebody hear the Lord. Amen. We're not doing it the right way. Well, I send, I send, to, I send some money to it. Look, money is not going to help. I'm not telling you where, how to give, what. I'm but you can't buy this is what my point is. Okay? Service of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members' service to uncleanness and to, iniqu and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members' service to righteousness, listen, unto holiness. 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 Don't you think a people would be more effective if they can, like Jesus did, just walk through a crowd. Yeah, they want to kill you, but they can't. You see what I'm saying? That, this is what God is showing us. And it, it's a preparation, but it's, it's two things at the same time. A preparation, but a call to, to be. You hear that right there? You know, sister, how is this going to work? Don't, don't let how get in your head. Be. Hear that? Don't let how not come anywhere Anywhere in, in this equation. Because you're talking about being one with God. Is anything too hard for God? No. no, no. Are we making something up as we go along? No, I'm telling you what the Spirit is saying to the churches. See this right here? See that? The man's flesh power can do nothing. You see that? Rockets might stay stuff off. I'm just telling you things. But you, but you, I'm talking about stopping stuff and changing hearts. They won't do that. Y'all hear God? But the power of God will. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But when you were servants of sin, you were, you listen, you were free from righteousness. What, but listen to this question. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? See that? There was a time when you didn't have to know anything about righteousness. Just out there, just let it all hang out. <laughs> oh, you look back, I was real stupid. Took some real chances. Thank God for his grace. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. For the end of those things is what? It's death. A whole bunch of people went out doing some of the same things we did. You understand what I'm saying? It's nothing to play with and not just give people license to just do it. Well, you can do this. Ain't nothing going to happen. You, you're dealing with death. 
See that? But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and listen, the end everlasting life. You're not worried about bios. See that? You know nobody's going to be able to take your life because it's in God's hand. You see that? So you're not worried about that. But the thing about it is, as spirit, there's a part that's never, ever, you're never going to die. You hear that? It's one with God. Never, ever, 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 as long as he is, you will never want to die. He is, look, without end. World without end. See that right there? Listen to what it says. Everybody knows this scripture. You know what, Bishop Paul? When I was studying this and I read this scripture, learned this from a child, and nobody said how important it was to go back to verse 1. <laughs> And read verses 1 through 22 before you got to this one. But everybody knows this one. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now you see all that we've read up before that? And how important that is and why this, this thing where people think, well, I can just do what I want to. And people used to have like a, like a little, little joke about it. Well, I feel like a fool in hell and they had a good time. Well, listen, listen. You just didn't know what you're saying. You didn't know. You didn't know. Second Corinthians 9 and 8. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That you always having all sufficiency in all things. May abound to every good work. I think it will be wonderful. As we let the Lord Jesus stimulate us. Any place that we have a deficit this week that we've seen in this church, like this church, and something we can relate to in a spiritual situation like this. Let the light of Christ stimulate us so that we can get back where he is the center and what we overcome. I think that's a precious promise. He's the tree of life. This end of what? The paradise of God or the presence of God. The restoration, we're blessed because like I told you, you know, a lot of people just go through churches, go to church, and they just go through like a service, a routine, and they feel good because I met that obligation of going out to the house of worship this week. You know, that kind of thing like that. But when you can come and experience the presence of God, and you know it's the presence of God, and not something people have conjured up, I think we ought to give God praise. Amen. Bless his holy name. Amen. 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 Amen.